In the past five years, storefront content has evolved into a highly engaging visual style. But did you realize that this type of designs are now everywhere in my real storefront videos? Everyone is curious about the designs, where they come from and how to use them. Some creators have already figured out, while others are still searching for the source. In this video, we'll select three designs and show you how to turn these static visuals into a wildly short form editing style just using After Effects. But first, let's watch the final result. So this is what's really important. If you have an identity that is bad in any way, you can never change that identity without emotions. So who we are is a narrative of our most emotional experiences. So if your emotions are dulled by drugs, by technology, by watching serial killer shows, you will never change who you are. It is impossible. The neuroscience of your identity development requires emotional experience. Now to start an animation, I'm gonna make the main cut from the original video, which is an episode from the Diary of Zero channel. I will drop the link down below so you can check it out. So I'm gonna choose the first character that fits our first scene and open it in Adobe Illustrator. And separate the layers into arm, mask, main character, clouds and background, then import them into After Effects. Then select the arm layer first and parent it to our character. After placing the anchor point around elbow, we will add a rotation keyframe and move our playhead to back and rotate the arm around here. Now to start an animation, the first thing I do is roto brush on the main character and remove background, so we can place our vector behind the person in the video. Then let's go ahead and bring our character into main composition and place it behind the man we just roto brushed. Then I'm gonna add a position keyframe to our character, place it outside the scene and add one more keyframe to bring it back in. And now we're gonna select the roto brush layer and parent it to our main video and add a slight position movement. Finally, we'll set the keyframes to easiest. You can see that we are now actually building our storytelling and it's time to jump into our first scene. For this, let's go ahead and add a position keyframe to the video and move it to the left. Then I'm gonna bring the background and clouds layer into the main composition and place the clouds first. I will add a position keyframe to clouds to make movement from right to left and zoom it out into speed graph. And using our rectangle tool, let's mask the background layer and add a path keyframe from where the transition starts and move it to the right. Then let's move forward and open the mask and set the keyframes to easiest. So now we can make the rest of the clouds movement, making them move to the left throughout the entire scene. The next thing we'll do is set the final position of the main character. For this, I'm gonna add scale and position keyframes so the character will be in the right place to connect to the next scene. Great, so now we have this cool intro scene, let's go ahead and work on our next animation. First, we select and download this design and import After Effects. So, I'm gonna disable the character in the middle, but not delete it because we need it for the next animations. Then, let's import a new composition to our main composition. I will add a position keyframe to our character where the moment starts and move our playhead and place it in the middle of the shadows. When our playhead is on the last keyframe, I'm gonna parent the pre-compose layer to our main character, so now they will move together seamlessly. The next thing we'll do is to change the color of the large shadow character to black. To do this, I will apply effect called change the color, setting the first color to current one and second color to black. And now to add some extra depth of this animation, I select all the characters here and add opacity. And I will select the four characters closest to the center and change their layer color to yellow to avoid mixing with others. Now the reason for selecting only these characters is that we are going to add position keyframes to move them from the outside to the center. This way our scene will look much better. After smooth it out in graph editor, this is how it looks. I will also change the layers timing so they will open randomly. And lastly, let's also make a small trick for the ropes as well. To do this, I select my rectangle tool and mask the ropes entirely and add a path keyframe and open the mask. With this being done, we just finished this scene, so now we can move on to the next one. The first thing we'll do is separate all the character layers so we can import them into After Effects and control each one. Now the first thing I do is select all the layers and activate 3D. Then right click, create a new camera and open to view. So we're gonna remove all the unnecessary layers and after that it's gonna become a great triangle shape. Then let's add a position and orientation keyframes to our camera layer and zoom in all the way. Starting from the beginning, I select all the layers in a row and change their layer colors which will be very helpful for adjusting the distance between them. Now that we have a beautiful well-organized timeline, we'll add some distance between each row to create a 3D effect. 
To do this, we'll select the layers with the same color and set the Z position difference of 30 between them. And then, we'll reposition all the separated lines and bring them closer to each other. With this done, here is how it looks. So, if you remember, we had a character that we disabled for previous scene, now we need that. Let's paste it to our composition and place it to the top. Then, I will set the first camera keyframe based on the character placement and zoom out throughout the scene so the camera can travel right above the characters. And I'm gonna duplicate one of the characters and place it right in front of the camera. And now, to add some extra depth of this animation, I enable the depot field and open the top view. And add keyframes to focus distance and aperture, this way our scene will look cooler instead of having a flat appearance. With this being done, we just finished the first part of the scene, and now it's time to make the rest. So, let's create a new null object and change the name as cam controller, and connect our camera to null object. I'm gonna add a position keyframe here, and 6 seconds later, add another one and set the position down. Then select both keyframes and make easy ease. And we can even add a slight rotation, to do this, Let's add a keyframe to Z rotation, move the playhead forward a bit, and rotate it around minus 7. With this in mind, let's start to add assets. We don't need the smoke and background here, so we're gonna remove them and import our project. Let's enable the 3D and place the hand right below the characters. Next, we're gonna use a green screen smoke stock video, remove the background with using K light. Open the 3D parent to hand and place it, and change the opacity settings to add to make it more visible. And the second assets that we're gonna use is a vector phone, we'll follow the same steps for this as well. And finally, I'm gonna add 4 more assets that related to our voiceover and place them right below the phone. And this is how it looks so far. Now let's go ahead and make the last but not least animation. So, we select and download this design and separate all the layers in Illustrator as always and import After Effects. Let's activate 3D for all layers and place them to the scene then we'll zoom into character inside of the head and set the opacity to 0 for the other layers. And around 3 seconds later, we'll zoom out again and open the opacity. Let's add some movements for the drops inside of the head as well. To do this, I will use a wave warp effect and set the wave width to 40, then I will double click the stopwatch and set the time speed around 140. And this is the final result. After finish all the animations, I will move the pre-compose layer to our main composition and add in zoom out transition from the animation composer. From now on, what I do is making some color correction with using Lumetri color. And add in fast box blur around the corners with using mask. And that's it, you just saw how we turned 3 static vector designs into a dynamic engaging animations just using After Effects. But as you might have noticed, the final video includes additional elements like animations, motion graphics and sound effects that weren't covered in this tutorial. Those were added later in CapCut to enhance the overall impact and bring everything together seamlessly. If you are interested in breakdown of those elements, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, I will see you in the next one.